In 1861, Melbourne hoteliers Spears and Pond sponsored the first professional cricket team from England. And on Christmas Eve, huge crowds turned out to watch the team parade down Burke Street. The Englishmen were paid £150 each to showcase their expertise in what was once a game of amateurs. And when they took on an 18-man team from Victoria, more than 45,000 people came to watch. The tour made a huge profit, paving the way for the first intercolonial test matches. A few years on, and Australia's first touring team went to England. It was an all-Aboriginal side, and despite the tour being a great success, the players weren't paid a wage or a promised £50 bonus. When Test Cricket arrived in 1877, the Australian players turned out for nothing. But Charles Bannerman's achievement in scoring Test Cricket's first century did not go unrewarded. A collection was taken up among the crowd and Bannerman received the princely sum of £87, 7 shillings and sixpence. For many years there was controversy over who was in charge of the game, the players or the administrators. There were fights, player boycotts of matches, even fisticuffs, as they sought a greater share of the takings. But in 1906, the Orwellian-sounding Australian Board of Control took over, and by the time Don Bradman was delighting us out in the middle, it was clear cricketers were no longer masters of their financial destiny. Well, they tell me fact is stranger than fiction Legends grow from deeds gone by When they tell their stories straight and true You will know it's all said and done You will know it's all said and done You will know it's all said and done